Inspiration Nation, hello, Lee Kemp here for another week on the podcast. It is a two-man show this week. Ryan is not with us, but Jose is here. How are you this week, Joe? Very good, thank you, Lee. All the better for being back. I'm glad I'm back. I'm back. He's back in the seat. Yeah. <clears throat> so, so people know, just we're a bit later now. We're doing our usual live. We are on YouTube and on TikTok. Just follow Joe. You'll find out when we're going live. Um, but we're a bit later than usual. And the reason we're later than usual is Joe went to the dentist. And then he went out and had some food and he had a little Guinness and he assured me he's not drunk, but then he started singing. So I will let you judge for yourselves. Oh, great singing. Love a bit of singing. Bit of but, happiness. But as you Always bring your food. slurry drunk self here, Joe, what are we going to talk about this week? We are talking about Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I love this book. And we're talking about we must Sharpen be, the Saw. We must be at number seven now, Joe, if I'm keeping count right. Yeah, I did just say number seven, Lee. So, yes, you are absolutely right. Maybe, well done. maybe I should Jumping in, do jumping some in listening. after I said. <laughs> I, just, I just want to talk. I just want people to know I'm here. You do, will you? Right, go on, Lee. Off you go. So, Joe, what are we talking about this week? <laughs> we're talking about number seven, Sharpen the Saw, right? So, this is what we're talking about, Sharpen the Saw, right? Honestly, it's such a great book. Um, uh, can you guess, Lee, or anybody on TikTok, especially M, who said, hey, uncle, uh, uh, on TikTok. Um, can you guess what, Jose. Sharp, what Sharp and the Saw is about? Anybody? Anybody? TikTok, Lee, the audience on YouTube, let's go. So is it, Joe? Is it? Oh, we've got some nice little likes on the YouTube. Thank you, people, for sending them through. Is this to do with improving your skills? Something in that it vein? Is. You're- yeah, you're absolutely right. So that, it's actually, not just a hat rack. No, it's not just a hat rack. It's a very intelligent hat rack. <laughs> you flatter and, me. Uh, <laughs> so it's, this, this is about renewal. It's about continuous learning. So essentially what Stephen is talking about in his book, he's talking about how you renew all the habits. I love this, this one because it's basically just making sure you keep yourself on point, uh, making sure that you keep practicing the habits that we do. And one of the things I want to talk about is a little model he's got in here. And he talks about PC, which is production capacity. That's the that's you. So production, what you can produce, which adds value. So he calls it PC in the book. And that's page 288 of this particular version. Okay. So I want to show you on YouTube, there's a circle. And I will explain on the audio as well. So on the audio, there's, I'll just do a little bit more on there. So the audio, if you audio listens there, the, there's a circle, and the, on the top of the circle is physical. So there's four elements to self-development. One's the physical, that's exercise, nutrition, stress management. If you go across the circle, across to the right, then it's social and emotional, which is service, empathy, synergy, intrinsic security. Then if you go around the circle, half the circle down the bottom is spiritual, so it's value, clarification, commitment, study, and meditation. And then lastly, is mental, which is reading, visualizing, planning, and writing. To sharpen the saw and keep yourself developing and to keep moving forward, it's all about developing those four, as always. So how do we how do we develop the physical dimension? How do we develop our social and service element? How do we do the spiritual? You know, do we do meditation? How do we do the mental? So let me just explain how I do this. So for the physical, for me, I've currently just taken up tennis. I've done running before, as I've done the podcast. So I try and do that. I try to, I don't always succeed. I'm trying to eat healthier, but it doesn't always happen. I had a curry tonight, which was lovely, by the way. I had a curry tonight. But the whole thing is if you can genuinely eat healthy, that's the whole thing. So exercise and nutrition. Um, Social, like social and emotional, which is the service, uh, empathy, synergy, intrinsic security. For me, that's the podcast, right? So that for me is service, providing a service. We do this for free. You know, Lee, Lee, Ryan and myself, we come on and we we want to, share experiences so you can learn and develop and accelerate through coaching right so that's that for me that's social and emotional and also there's that piece of it says their intrinsic security so if we go back to some other episodes and lee please feel free to jump in we talk about maslow's hierarchy of needs and where we got that sort of security part of the maslow so i reckon that is for me that's not tapping into that part and then there's a the spiritual which is meditation now spiritual doesn't mean it's religion it just means you know do you have beliefs do you do meditation? Do you take time out to just be by yourself and just just discover more about yourself by meditating, just letting thoughts run and really contemplation? That's what that's about. Contemplating where you're going, what's happening with you, processing life essentially. And then you've got the mental, where is the it's the it's the mental uh, exercise, i.e., like reading, 
um, new getting new strategies in like for me and my work and doing this actually the podcast fits quite a bit quite a few preparing for the podcast like reading this i read this before coming to the podcast so things like that you know all the other coaching books that i've got as well like coaching for performance <laughs> uh like uh where's the coaching habit gone it's around here somewhere but there's a coaching habit by michael michael bungai stein i don't know i probably popped it somewhere but i love them oh where has it gone i heard it here a minute oh, ago he's lost um, it he's lost it oh no it's a great book by the way what's happened to that book anyway but I love coaching, so as you know, I just really struggle. Where's that book gone? It's like disappeared off the face of the earth. It's weird. But I was using it today because I was doing coaching training today. And that's why I think it's weird why it's disappeared. I'll try and find it in a minute. But essentially, these are the things that help you renew. Uh, I write in my, did I write, I wrote in my um, journal the other day, just to, to remind myself, Lee, what you were talking about earlier, about non-judgment, being kind to yourself, kindness to others, um, and also that stoic practice. So those are the sorts of things that I do following that circle and it's not perfect you know I'm not, i don't do things perfectly i fall off sometimes like everybody else but this is what this is about i'm just going to ask you a question now what are the things that you do to self-renew and essentially you know sharpen your saw like in fact what just for us I, you answer that there is a little story in here because i quite like this little story it says um just let me read this so i'll read the story out of the book it says suppose you were to come upon someone in the woods working feverishly feverishly to saw down a tree you ask them, what are you doing? And the guy says, or the person says, can't you see? Comes the impatient reply, I'm sawing down a tree. You look exhausted, you exclaim. How long have you been at it? Over five hours, he returns. And I'm beat. This is hard work. Well, why don't you take a break for a few minutes and sharpen that saw? You, you, you inquire. I'm sure it would go a lot faster. I don't have time to sharpen the saw, the person says emphatically. I'm too busy sawing. So what's that saying is that you've got to take time out to improve yourself. Otherwise, you're just going to slow down. You're not going to be better. You're not going to improve. Anyway, Lee, I'm going back to a question. Sorry, I just trampled over that a little bit. But what are things that you do? What practices do you do to sharpen your saw? That was a good... I like that story, by the way. And I've, there's, there's different versions of that. But it is that sometimes people get so caught up in the doing and don't take that step back to do something that can make things easier for themselves and i think that's that's a really good illustration of that it's it's the same as the kind of the illustration of the person with a bucket trying to scoop all the water out of a boat that's got a massive hole in it and you don't i haven't got time to fix the hole so i've got to get all this water out and it's the same the same sort of thing and i really i think it's quite a powerful analogy that one or metaphor whichever one of those words seems the best mm. you do me a favor can you go round the the circle again and tell me each of the four oh. things and we can talk about each of them in response to your question right so the first one is physical so and what i'll do this as well this this one it resonates with me and it makes sense and it lands so i know that needs to happen i i would say on and off for about four months last year i went to the gym and i've not been since on and off a bit of walking been doing a bit of dieting recently so it's something i i do and i'm conscious of i could probably do a bit better with yeah, you know, that one just makes sense to me on 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 the physical side. You know, we we're all aware of needing to do it, and I think, as I'm sure, was slash is the same for you, Joe. As you get a bit older, you get a bit more aware of that as well. Sure. And the importance of it. My diet now is certainly a lot better than it was ten years ago and twenty years ago and thirty years ago. I do I do stuff. I'm conscious of that one, and it 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 makes sense and it doesn't fill me with a sense of dread when you say it like oh my god i'm way behind on doing something there so i yeah, think, I think the thing's doing your best right. on the physical yes okay do you want the next one yes social and emotional this is service empathy synergy intrinsic security so synergy is the bit where you're working together with people actually so that's what yeah. to say that yeah. and intrinsic security and we well we do that do we do that with the podcast there's a trio of us it's a, a thing i'm very conscious of within work or other things i do as well so i think i I think I've learned to tick that box as I've got older. Intrinsic security, so that's the, that's the inward stuff, isn't it? So, and so, and is that purely in that kind of social interactions with other people? Is that how you register that? Yeah, I would say service, isn't it? Yeah. So service, empathy. The other word I think goes hand in hand with service is purpose. And I do, we talk through lots of different things. I currently have my, it's on my, on my desktop here, I call it my 8am list that I work through and do bits and bobs and I've got things on but they're all about achieving something and I feel like through work and home life and things I do with my friends and the, my extra little bits and bobs hobbies I feel like I'm I'm in a good place for that kind of purpose and service thing at the moment I do want to make a bit of time maybe to do some sort of volunteering thing there's a lot of 
virtual things you can do with that as well as physical now so that's on my radar and i think that's something i'll dig into in the second half of this year so i've got a reasonable filled up bar on that one i'd say but some some ideas i want to do to help just kind of develop that a bit further and i do think it's in that kind of whatever it looks like that kind of volunteering space yeah and i think that's that thing that like you say ties into the purpose doesn't it i think that's the key with it um it ties into purpose a lot do you want the next one yes spiritual yes, spiritual that what when you said when you went through them what that one didn't land with me so much that was like a, mm -hmm. well i don't need to worry about that Shall i just read it what so there's value clarification so that'd be your own personal value system so are you sticking to it you know i suppose the conscious part of you know when you're looking at your conscience i suppose are you sticking to like um good human values i suppose that's sort of it's commitment study and meditation they're the they're the sort of uh four subheadings we know i had my little dalliance with some meditation probably a couple of years ago in fact now joe probably more than a couple of years ago in fact it's way back in the archive people you can hear it in quite a, i'm going to say it must be an episode in the 30s 40s somewhere that sort of range i would hazard a guess I and mean, i see the benefits of it and there's things we you know we've talked again in another podcast my kind of driving time after doing some odd jobs and creative brain starts to kick in and all that all that sort of stuff so i think I do that self-awareness bit. I don't, yeah, it, just, it doesn't land with me under the banner of spiritual, but I know what the things are that you're you're kind of referring to there. But that's probably, I think, whether it's true or whether it's perception, I'd say that's probably a weaker area for development, something that probably needs a bit of focus if I was going to do that. Yeah, because you're talking about meditation. Someone said something to you, I think it was an early podcast about meditation, and you're talking about something, you tried it and you quite liked it. Um, what was it? I can't remember what it was. Um, you got me to do it. I did it during the recording. Yeah, I came you did back it. from the room just, and I was sure on floating else that sort of said, some, said something to you. Like in the, I think it's in the moment stuff, actually. That's probably where I'm trying to go with it. The in the moment stuff. You know when you're talking about... The, or the mindfulness you know, type like of thing. Yeah. Mindfulness, that's yeah. it. So so I, so I, what from what you said in the previous... That's where I think it sits with you at the that's minute. That's true, that yeah. And that is something I'm conscious of. Because that right. is that intrinsic reflection is in the moment. It's it's pretty spiritual because you're tapping into that in the moment living in the moment being in the moment knowing where you are knowing where you sit so anyway so i'll let you expand on that no, i agree that that's, might that's, something that's, oh i've got a, i've got a lee echo coming through joe back away from oh. your microphone oh, i've not done anything no oh. there we is go is that better oh no i'm still there no that's better is that that's better? better i may have to be closer possibly it may have to be closer hold on that's right slight might be a slight echo people we'll be good with it so no, I think you're right. I think the mindfulness, and obviously we talked about it quite a lot over the last year. So I'm, I'm quite conscious of now. So you're right. That is where that does sit with me in the more, yeah, in the moment, taking things in, being able to compartmentalise stuff, appreciate the moments and the little things. So I agree. And it's, you know, it's something I was very sceptical skeptical of about five years ago but i really really believe in now yeah i think that's your spiritual journey right there honestly i really believe that's the start of it it's very it's, um, true. definitely for me the meditation was my start of mine and in fact you know we talk about eckhart tolle and, and i'm sort of hang on this one a bit because it can be one of those areas where things a bit it's a bit oh it's a bit religious because i had real hang-ups about religion and if you go back in the podcast you'll know that I, you know a lot i did lose my mum but we had a discussion about religion didn't we you know it was quite vocal about it triggered me quite a lot because I had quite an upbringing with it and I felt it quite controlling. Um, but I'm not saying religion's bad because I think religion can be good and, it's, and it, can, it can help people through difficult times. And I think the spiritual bit is the bit that helps you through those difficult times, that spiritual renewal, whether it's mindfulness, whether it's meditation, whatever works for you. But I think that's a real, like you say, I think that's probably something that's missing but from quite a few people potentially, that spiritual yes. bit, because it can be a feel a little bit, like you say, for people that are probably like yourself, like a little, a little bit red and want to go for it and stuff like that can seem a little bit woolly a little bit ooh, bit bit woo woo right it can feel a little bit like that or people can think of it but it's not it really is something that's powerful and and the fact that you said you're quite skeptical about it and then you tried it and it's, it's starting to come i think it just pays homage to it and people like ray dalio swear by meditation tom billiou they swear by meditation and these these people are just massive performers so there's definitely something in it and i think you know, if we're all watching this, it's something we can definitely practice. So, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to tap into that and definitely felt better for doing it. Um, and as I've got older, I've just appreciated things more like watching, you know, looking at the garden, appreciating things, just enjoying that yeah. moment and the things around you and how it all works. How it all works. It's ridiculous how things work, really. Um, but, yeah, you know, I think, as, a, as, a, as I say, Lee, I think you are doing that from what you said on the podcast. Yeah. So on the last one, then. And, yes, number four is mental so this is reading visualizing planning and writing 
So I suppose it's mental agility, I suppose it's referring yeah. to for me. And as you came back into it, that's where I'm then kind of moving back into my comfort zone, albeit maybe I wasn't as far out of it with the other as my initial perception was. So when well, we reference it here, I've got my, I have a plan for the month for certain things I want to achieve. I've got budget sheet we use for the month for things we're trying to do financially. Same within work, I kind of work in a world of like backlogs and short planning sessions and all that sort of jazz. So I think in terms of that planning piece, I think I do that like professionally and personally, short term and long term. And obviously, you know, long term plans are quite fuzzy, short term are a lot more crystallised and clear. So I do a lot of that. Not so much reading, but I do the, you know, the positive social media stuff like we've, we've talked about before, Joe. So like LinkedIn and gravitate to things I like and keep, you know, Particularly at the moment, I'm quite into researching some of the stuff that's going on with like AI and this whole chat GPT thing and all of that. Mm. So I do, but it's like little bite-sized chunks of reading of things rather than like I'll sit down and read a whole book in an evening or something like that. So I think, and that's natural. I don't really have to try to do that. I've just made that part of my routine. Yeah, I relate to that because I, I get emails about stoicism and things like that. You know, I get emails sometimes I post them and he goes, oh my God, Jose's posted a mess of great thing on the chat again. It's, it's spread to two messages. What's going on, right? But I tend to do that. So that's mine. Again, I love that. As well as reading yeah. books, I love that. And I think, actually, I think you get quite a bit from that because you actually just, oh, we're going to share that. And while you share it, you start learning about it because you're sharing it. It's Absolutely quite a powerful right. thing. Um, or telling someone about it. Actually, Stephen Covey, in The Seven Habits, talks about if you learn so, if you pass it on, it's more, you learn it better because you're trying to explain it to someone else, which I think yeah. is a really really good things so that's it really pretty goodly anything else you want to add to that like from your point of view any other sort of overarching thoughts in there i just think it's that and we, we talk about it a lot you know this the one of the underlying things of podcast is continuous development and opening people up to the idea of that and i think that's what that that smacks of is you're never done on your journey and i think it's i quite like the way it kind of frames it into those four four areas because i think certainly for me it'd be very easy like i talked about there's a few of them where i'd gravitate to those type of aspects and probably neglect some of the others and actually i might do something where i just kind of plan a little bit around making sure i'm i'm ticking all four of those boxes i think it's really important that we don't look for perfection i think if people are listening and watching don't aim for perfection just just notice like what Lee's done, what we've done. Like, oh, that one's falling off a bit. Maybe we need to put a little bit more attention yeah. on that. But just do something. But it's an, on, just, it's an little... onward journey, though, isn't it? You're never going to... Yeah. It's not like you'll be complete. Yeah. You're always just trying to improve and get better and see ways to do it and, you know, challenge yourself. And I think that's the thing. Sometimes you say, oh, we've got to complete that or it's got to be finished. But it never is a finish. I think if you just relax and know that it's not... You never ever sort of finish the painting. Your painting's always in, in flow, really. You just want to add a little bit here add a little bit there you're like a create it's like a creator it's like you're always just tweaking yeah. little things little one percent the one percent's right those little one percent improvements that add up over time and i think that's so important with this as well don't aim like don't go I'm gonna blast it all in one day and just gonna go da, 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 like <laughs> and then just exit you just get exhausted don't you just exhaust just like just take one thing like take physical mental just like do one small thing and just build on that just slowly i mean that's what james clear talks about in his book tom and how it's just do it small start small, small make it really achievable do one action a week even it's like just to start and then you just build a habit and then it'll be like lee and i we've got these little habits that we do but we can still be a little bit better for me i still need to read a bit more but this podcast is making me read a bit more because i want to share these and so you make so basically this podcast made me reread the chapters essentially which is then reinforced really it fired head, up isn't it yeah yeah, and it really fired up that whole thing. Oh, I need to do more of this because I've read read them. It's may remind me of things that I still need to work on, like you, Lee. Like it's remind you of those things we need to work on. So yeah, I love that. Anything else you want to add to that, Lee? Not on that. Not on that particular bit. Yeah, because I wanted to add some things because when you said about meaning and purpose, there's a few things like Victor Frankl. He, so he, I've highlighted a couple of things as well. Like I'll just sort of I'll highlight a few things just to show you that I've had a little read. But you've referenced Victor Frankl and finding meaning and purpose. If you've not read that book. I recommend you read it. Uh, man, man's search for meaning. You should be really sort of person's, man, for, person's search for meaning because it actually applies to anybody. And it's it's lovely. And there's a guy that I never even heard of that I just reread this book. And this is the thing about this beautiful book. Like, it's like, there's a guy called George George Bernard Shaw. And this is, this is a passage from, I don't know who this person is. I need to look him up. I've got no idea. But he's got this passage in this book, which I thought was quite good. It said, this is the true joy in life that being used for a purpose recognized by yourself as a mighty one that being a force of nature instead of a feverish selfish little clod 
of ailments and grievances, complaining that the world will not devote itself to making you happy. I am of the opinion that my life belongs to the whole community as, and as long as I live it, it, it is my privilege to do for it whatever I can. I want to be thoroughly used up when I die, but the harder I work, the more I live. I rejoice in life for its own sake. Life is no brief candle to me. It's a sort of splendid torch, which I've got to hold up for the moment. And I want to make it burn as brightly as possible before handing it on to future generations. I find it's really inspiring. I did go for a fat part of my life where I think, well, why aren't I getting this? Why aren't this happening? You know, almost like the world should revolve around you, but it doesn't. Um, and that you, if you want something, you have to put in the work. And luck will come. We talked about luck as yes. a skill, right? If you do the work, then you're more likely to be prepared if an opportunity comes to take. And we talked That's about this before, happens, right? 100%, yeah. And this is why I love that passage, because it talks about those things. And sometimes we think, this is why I didn't really like The Secret, the book, the book, The Secret. I don't know if everyone, you've read that. But if you just visualize and, and imagine it's going to happen, you have to take action, you know, to things to happen where, you know, I think they've evolved it now. But, um, you know, you really do have to do something for things to happen. You have to impress upon the world. So there you go. That was that. I really enjoyed that. Think George Bernard that... Shaw, by the way, was an Irish playwright right. and a political activist. Born 1856, died 1950. Blimey. He won the Nobel okay. Prize for Literature in 1925. Wow. How good is, is that a Google? Facts. I love that's that. It, that's a little Google. Do you know what? Thanks for that, Lee, because now I've learned that. Now. See? It's, it's every day, inspiring. Every day think, is a that, chance to learn. To think that that was that long ago as well. It's like philosophy, isn't it? It's like this stuff is not new. This stuff is we're standing on the shoulder of giants here, right? We are Absolutely. trying to learn through the experience of others, aren't we? Like they've been through that life and we can learn and take the shortcuts and, you know, get ahead of the game a little bit to really do these things. So I love that. How are we doing for time, Lee? Have I got time for just well, one you, more bit? You can do one more bit. I will let you, and then we'll and right. then I'll wrap us up. All right. So what I wanted to do really share the application of this. So this is the application of the, the sharp and the saw. So some application suggestions of sharp and the saw. It says um, number one is make a list of activities that would help you keep in good physical shape that would fit your lifestyle and that you would you could enjoy over time. In fact, I need to write something down. Over there. I need to do something with this and I'm going to write down something to remind okay. me just something. Second is, and number two is select one of the activities and list it as a goal in your personal role area for the coming week. At the end of the week, evaluate your performance. If you didn't make your goal, was it because you subordinated to a genuine higher value or did you fail to act with integrity to your values? So essentially, so did you follow through um, or did you just go, I oh, do you know what, I can't be bothered. Um, so again, just to, just assess that quite like that. Number three, make a similar list of renewing activities in your spiritual and mental dimensions. In your social and emotional area, list relationships you would like to improve or specific circumstances with, a, with which public victory would bring greater effectiveness. Select one item in each area to list as a goal for the week, implement and evaluate. Uh, so I, I imagine just for that one, just simply because there's a bit, I think there's some stuff you'd have to read before that, but just concentrate on spiritual and social emotional area for that, just for the circles, just listen back to the podcast and just focus on the spiritual and social areas. What are you going to do in those areas? I'll probably simplify that in that area. And then number four, commit to write down specific sharpen the saw activities in all your four dimensions every week to do them and evaluate your performance and results. So what you can do every week in one of those areas, I don't think I even do that. But just to start with 1%, right? But that, this is proper work. It's really hard. Yeah, I might do. Um, late, later on, as you know, I've got some stuff coming up, Joe. But second half of the year, I might do I might do a month where I go in on that, writing down each week, making a plan, seeing what it does. Well, it could be on your backlog, your life list, right? It could. I'll, keep it will be, I'll add it to my... backlog, right? Yes, I will add it to my backlog. Do you know what? I really am annoyed about that book. That's so annoying. Well, look, it's going to go into a oh, grumpy anyway. rant before we can wrap I just, up the um, podcast. Just annoyed. I just like, where is that book gone? Anyway, I just wanted to uh, one thing about this. And there was a really, I was speaking to someone the other day, someone who listens to the, well, someone who listens to the podcast. Um, and they said, there's a saying that's going around at the minute um, about sort of development, personal development, self development. It's going around, I don't know if you've heard it, Lee, but it said, you want three hobbies one hobby to make you rich, a hobby to make, keep you fit. And a hobby to keep you creative. I like that. And I really love that. So I'm thinking, what is that? How does that work for me in the last few minutes? So the hobby to make you rich, well, that could be the podcast because that could take off, right? That could take off. 
hobby to keep fit would be tennis for me like that's keeping me fit it's the tennis and then the creative bit i just think for me is the podcast as well that keeps you creative like doing different things so you know and the rich bit i say i say you know if we get more subscribers you keep subscribing what lee's going to do in a minute you know we get advertising revenue we could just do this for free and you you get the benefit but we get you know that, that almost that um what's it called passive income because of the because people love keep watching it so don't forget to share it uh, Louis said, "How's your day?" It's very good. Thank you for asking. How are you, Louis? So, Lee, that is the that was my last bit there. So, I don't know if you want to do your shilling or uh, you've got any comments on that. Actually, have you got any thoughts on the hobby? Well, I'll give you quickly. I've got. I said gym on and off for fit. Could do better with it. I think this is my creative, and I've got some ideas for a rich, but I've not done a few passive income things. But I've not done anything on that yet. So I'm probably I'm probably a hobby short on my list right now. Quite like that hobby thing. But you do wrestling, don't you? Is there anything in that? No, no, that's more of a. I don't know if it's a hobby. It's a fandom. Okay. All right. All right. Good oh, deal. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I'm sure the same with the wrestling. Well. You love that, don't you? I yeah. do. I definitely, definitely do, as we all know. And actually, so I was going to do this for you last week, Joe, because Joe likes cutting out some good little shots of us to put on the um, thumbnails on YouTube. So, as you referenced it, I'm going to do my shilling, but I'm going to do it with this on Joe, so you can put it on the. Uh, oh, that's really good. Thing. So. Oh, I love that. Head over <laughs> to inspirationation.org.uk for everything to do with the podcast. Details coaching service. Sign up for Joe's newsletter. Get your merchandise. I'd show you some, but I'm a bit weighed down. I don't know if Joe's got a mug there at the moment to show us. Follow no, us on haven't. social media at listen to I N, listen T O I N, and look for Joe everywhere. Just put Jose Neuer Inspiration Nation into your Google machine and you will find all sorts of Joe. Follow us on YouTube and TikTok, and you can join in live as people have today with the podcast, as well as loads of other great content, including this shot of me with my replica wrestling belt, because that's how cool it is. It's not I a replica, it's a real one, isn't it? It's a real one, Lee, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, I won it. I won this. You won it against Rocky, or what's his name? Thunderlips for Rocky Three, right? Don't pretend you know what's going on. You're quite good with that, though. I'll give you that. <laughs> that's why I just I reference the reference of Hulk Hogan. Rocky Three, Thunder Lips. That's there you it. go. That was a good reference. <laughs> I like that. That is that is going way. What's that? 1980, 1981? Well, you're a Rocky fan, and I so something like that. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. It's about yeah, it is eighty. I reckon it's eighty-one. Yeah. See it's that? that time. You're well good. No yeah. more stuff. Love so that. yes, we support. We thank everyone. Last thing to say before me and Joe ramble off into the sunset. If you like what you are hearing, tell friends, tell family. That's what helps the podcast grow. Leave us a review. Share our content. All of that really helps us, and we appreciate each and every one of you that does that. Right. We do. I think all that's left, Joe, is for me to count us down. We'll say three, two, one. Inspiration Nation. Inspiration Nation. Catch you guys later. Catch you guys later. Catch you guys later, TikTok. Thank you so much for joining. Don't forget to share it. Let me know what your biggest takeaway is from this conversation. I'd love to know. Put it in the comments below and I'll respond to every single comment because that's the commitment I make to you in this community. Also, don't forget to subscribe right over here because we need you to build this inspiration nation community to get the podcast out there and to help other people for free. And also, don't forget to hit that bell right over here because if you hit that bell, then you're going to know when another videos go live. And don't forget to check out these videos right here next to me because those are other podcast episodes that can really help you out. I really, really appreciate it. And lastly, don't forget out to check the newsletter. The link is in the description below. That's where I can talk directly to you without through the YouTube, throughout the social, because you can have a direct communication channel with me through the email and you can get to know everything that's going on with Inspiration Nation, ask me questions and even give me suggestions on what you want us to talk about next. So I'd love to see you in the next video. So please click on those links. Please follow through. Please let's get this community building. I appreciate you. So until next time, I'll see you in the next video, Inspiration Nation, and I'll catch you guys later.